All right, we're going to go on to 5.7 analysis models using Newton's second law, but we're going to break it into three parts. Otherwise, it would be a very, very long video. And I think you'd get tired of watching it. So let's uh, share the um, PowerPoint. We're going to use two analysis models for solving problems. One is objects in equilibrium, that is acceleration equals zero, or accelerating, accelerating under the action of a constant external of constant external forces. Uh, so let's remember that we're only interested in external forces that act on an object. If objects are modeled as particles, there's no need to worry about rotational motion such as spinning. Uh, for now, let's neglect friction or, unless otherwise specified. And I think in this chapter it won't. Assume that the surf the surfaces are frictionless. Okay, we usually neglect the mass of any ropes, strings, or cables involved. We assume the magnitude of force exerted by any element of rope on an adjacent element uh, is the same for all elements along the rope. Um, words such as light or of negligible mass means ignore the mass. Uh, don't worry about it. When rope is attached to when a rope is attached to to an object pulls on the object, the rope exerts a force on the object in the direction away from the object, parallel to the rope. Uh, the magnitude T of that force is, the T stands for the tension in the rope, and it's a scalar quantity. Uh, let's look at, uh, let's continue. Okay. Uh, if, if the acceleration equals zero, if A equals zero, then the particle is in equilibrium. And it's a particle in equilibrium model, so that the nest force on the object equals zero. So the net force equals zero. Uh, consider the lamp suspended from a light chain fastened to the ceiling, figure A. Um, figure B is the force diagram for the lamp, showing the forces acting on the lamp. So the downward gravitational force Fg and the upward force T for the tension exerted by the chain. There are no forces in the x direction, so the sum of the forces in the x direction equals zero, and that's helpful. Um, this sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero, and that gives that the uh, forces in the y equals T minus Fg equals zero, or T equals Fg. So the tension is equal to the weight. Um, okay, note that T and F, G are not an action-reaction pair because they act on the same object uh, on the lamp. Now, the reaction force to T equals uh, is downward, the force exerted by the lamp on the chain. Um, okay. Um, Now, if A, if the acceleration is greater than zero, then we have a particle under a net force uh, model. And Newton's second law uh, gives force equals ma. Now, if we consider a crate being pulled to the right on a frictionless horizontal floor, as figure A. Of course, the floor directly under the boy must have friction. Uh, otherwise, his feet would simply slip when he tries to pull on the crate. Um, find the acceleration of the crate and force, and find the acceleration of the crate and the force the floor exerts on it. Uh, the forces on the crate uh, equal a free body diagram. So there's the uh, the FG, the weight of the box. There's the normal force, the support force from the platform, and there's the tension, the the tension in the rope from being pulled. Now, the horizontal force T acts through the rope. The magnitude of, ten, of T is the tension in the rope. Uh, in the vertical direction, the gravitational force Fg is downward, and the normal force N exerted by the floor on the crate is upward. Okay. Did I finish with that? Yes. Okay. Um, 
Now, let's apply Newton's second law in component form to the crate. Uh, the only force acting in the x direction is T. So we apply the we apply the sum of the forces in the x direction equals MA in the direction in the x direction to the horizontal motion. Um, so the sum of the forces equals T equals MA. So the acceleration in the x direction is the tension divided by the mass, the T divided by A. Uh, there's no acceleration in the y direction. The particle uh, it's a particle in the equilibrium model. So we click for the, the y direction, the sum of the forces equals the n, uh, the normal force minus the weight fg or zero. So n equals fg. So there's no motion, no, there's no acceleration in the vertical uh, in the vertical direction. Uh, the normal force equals the normal force magnitude equals the gravitational force magnitude, and it acts in they act in opposite directions. Uh, if t if the tension is a constant force, the acceleration a sub x uh, equals tension divided by mass is a constant. The crate modeled as a particle under constant acceleration in the x direction. The crate is modeled as a particle under the constant acceleration in the x direction. And we use kinematics to obtain the crate's position x and velocity vx as functions of time. Um, so we're not going to escape those equations of motion in chapters uh, two and four. Uh, they have to be part of your repertoire. Um, in a given problem, it's possible to have different analysis models applied in different directions, uh, such as the crate is a particle in equilibrium in the, in the vertical, but it's a particle under net force in the horizontal. So we've got two different models going on there. It's possible to describe an object by multiple analysis models that is, the crate is a particle under net force and a particle under constant acceleration in the horizontal direction. Okay. Um, let's look at another situation. The, we have a person pushing down in a phys physics book, the weight of the physics book, and the, the normal force. The normal force and is not always equal to the magnitude of Fg. Imagine a book lying on the table and you push down on the book with a force F. Because the book is at rest, the sum of the forces or the acceleration equals zero. Uh, so the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero. The normal force minus the, uh, the normal is the only upward force. The others are uh, the gravitational force downward and the force of you pushing on the book downward and all of those add up to zero so the normal force equals the gravitational force and the force you're pushing with so that equals um, mg plus the force you're pushing with um, here the normal force is greater than the gravitational force of the physics book um, okay particle in equilibrium now imagine um, imagine an object that can be modeled as a particle. If it, is, if it has several forces acting on it so that the forces all cancel, given a net force of zero, the object will have an acceleration of zero. This condition is mathematically described as the sum of the forces equals zero. Uh, as an example, you have a chandelier hanging over a dining room table. It's not moving. An object moving at terminal speed through a viscous medium, such as I said earlier, the skydiver reaching terminal velocity. Uh, he's moving, he's just not accelerating, he's at a constant uh, free fall speed. Uh, a steel beam in the frame of a building, it's not moving, all the sum of the forces equals zero. And a boat floating on a body of water, you have the mass of the boat, the weight of the boat, and you have the buoyant force uh, holding the the boat up, um, so that's uh, modeled as a particle with all the forces where all the forces cancel. Now that's a particle under a net force. Imagine an object that could be modeled as a particle. If it has one or more forces acting on it, so that there's a net force on the object, it will accelerate in the dire direction of the net force. The relationship between the net force and the acceleration 
is the sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration. Uh, Newton's second law. Uh, examples, a crate pushed across a factory floor, a falling object acted upon by a gravitational force uh, before it reaches terminal velocity, and a piston in an, autom in an automobile engine pushed by, pushed by hot gases, or a charged particle in an electric field. All of those are examples of a particle under a net force. Um, and we're going to 50, okay. Uh, let's look at a traffic light at rest. Um, a, traffic weight, a traffic light weighing 122 newtons hangs, in, hangs from a cable tied to two other cables fastened to a support as the figure, as in the figure. The upper cable makes the angles of theta equals 37 degrees and theta two equals 53 degrees with the horizontal. These upper cables are not as strong as the vertical cable and will break if the tension in them exceeds 100 newtons. Does the traffic light remain hanging in this situation or could one of the cables break? Uh, let's conceptualize this as by inspecting the drawing. Let us assume the cables do not break and nothing is moving. Uh, if nothing is moving, categorize this as if nothing is moving, no part of the system is accelerating. We can now model the light as a particle in equilibrium on which the net force is zero. Similarly, the net force on the knot that holds the cables together is zero. So it is also modeled as a particle in equilibrium. Um, so, uh, Okay, to analyze this, we construct a diagram of the forces acting on the traffic light and a free body diagram for the knot. Um, this knot is a convenient object to choose because all the forces of, inner, uh, of interest act along lines passing through the knot. From the particle in equilibrium model, we apply the sum of the forces equals zero for the traffic light in the y direction. And we'll see f of y is equal to the tension. Um, and T3 minus Fg equals zero, so T3 equals Fg. Uh, that's the, that's the uh, tension in the rope below the knot. Okay. Uh, now we choose the now we choose the coordinate axis as shown in the free body diagram, and resolve the forces acting on the knot into their components. Uh, so we have T1, uh, it's got an X component and a Y component, uh, minus T1 cosine theta 1, um, and T1 sine theta 1, uh, and T2 is T2 cosine theta 2, and T2 sine uh, theta 2 is the Y component. And of course, T3, we've already, uh, it's a, there is no X component, so it's zero, and the Y component is minus Fg. Uh, let's see. Choose the, the, I had lost my place. And the, that was in a, the y direction. Then we uh, choose the coordinate axis as shown in the free body diagram. We resolve, we resolve the forces acting on our, into their components. That's where, where I was. Now let's apply the particle and equilibrium model to the knot. And uh, equation one shows that the horizontal components of T1 and T2 must be equal in magnitude. And equation two shows that the sum of the vertical components of T1 and T2 must balance the downward force T3, which is equal in magnitude to the weight of the light. Uh, some of the forces, we've got the T1, in one direction and T2 in the other direction. And then for Fy, we've got T1 sine theta up, T2 sine theta up, and Fg uh, downward. Okay. Um, yes, I already read that. Okay, let's um, now solve equation one for T2 in terms of T1. So um, T2 equals T1 cosine 
uh, theta. In other words, we, we add T1 cosine theta to both sides. Um, then we divide by cosine 2. So you end up with T2 equals T1 cosine theta divided by co cos cosine theta 1 divided by cosine theta 2. Um, so we substitute uh, this value for T2 into equation 2, uh, equation 2 being up here, the uh, Fy equals T1 sine theta 1 plus T2 sine theta 2. Uh, we substitute this value for T2 into the equation, and we get uh, T1 sine theta, T2 sine theta plus Fg. That becomes uh, T1 sine theta 1 plus T1 cosine theta 1 divided by cosine theta 2 times sine theta 2 minus F sub G gravitational force equals zero. Um, now let's solve for T1. T1 becomes F of G divided by sine theta 1 plus cosine theta 1 tangent theta uh, 2. And uh, that's T1, solve for T1. Uh, sub substitute numerical values. There we go. Um, and using equation three, we solve for T2. Uh, okay. Uh, both values are less than 100 newtons. So the cables will not break. Uh, the, T2 is just barely under 100 newtons, 97.4. Uh, so it should not break under the right conditions. Okay. Um, suppose the two angles in the figure are equal. What would be the relationship between T1 and T2? Well, we can argue from the symmetry of the problem that the two tensions, T1 and T2, would be equal to each other. Mathematically, if the equal angles are called theta, then equation three becomes um, T2 equals T1 cosine theta over case cosine theta 2 equals T1, and which is 1 over 1, if the angles are equal, which tells us that the tensions are equal. Without knowing the specific value of theta, we cannot find the values of T1 and T2. The tensions will be equal to each other, however, however regardless of the value of theta. Okay, we'll take a short break here and continue looking at more analysis uh, model examples. So let's stop here.